Hello and welcome back. These days, at my age, I try to stay active and not be glued to the computer screen for too long, which is much harder than one would expect considering my line of work. But I was also fortunate enough to live opposite the stadium, which up until three months ago was the largest stadium in Indonesia. Um, just to show you how it looks like, this is uh, this is it on the in the evening. This is how it looks like at night, and it's pretty good. When this stadium was first built in 1962, with a seating capacity of 110,000, that would put it on the third place in today's world of 2022, behind only Narendra Modi Stadium in India and Rugrando First of May Stadium in North Korea, but above Michigan Stadium, um, 107,601 capacity. So during the pandemic, my best friend brought me a Mi Band as a Christmas gift, and I thought I should pick up running as an exercise considering the proximity to the stadium. And I've been wearing it as I go for my runs. In fact, I have it right now on my wrist. Uh, so for context, my runs are usually short. I tend to record only about uh, one, my 1km or 2km runs, and so that's what you see in, the, in on the dashboard. So trying to explain a little bit of the context. So 1km runs, um, this is the average speed, this is the, the fastest I've ever run, and then 2km, this is the fastest I've ever run, and this is during this period, during the 1st of uh, 10th of January till 30th of June. When I say that my runs are usually short, I, I, I mean that I tend to record only my 1km or 2km runs. The reason for that is beyond 2km, I start to incorporate some jogging or even walks, but under 2km, I could run without ever slowing to a jog or walk. Also important to note is that these are specific time activities. So when you see a walk of 2km or, or on let's say on the 30th of May, uh, it doesn't mean that if I've walked a total of 2km that day. It only means that within the day, within a specific time period, I started and completed a walk activity of 2km. So these are uh, all activities that are actively started and stopped on my fitness tracker, not the general amount of steps in a certain day. So what you build today uses data I've exported from my Mi Band, my Mi Fit series, and it's a pretty complete personal dashboard that brings together a lot of the separate concepts throughout the series. Now in particular, we use Altera, which I have a separate video on. We of course use PyScript, the main theme of this series. We use Pandas as well, and then I'll style it all up with some JavaScript glue and the Bootstrap CSS framework. So the dashboard is fully responsive, meaning it looks great on mobile devices, it looks great on mobile browsers, and the chart has cool interactivity as well. And the link to the live dashboard is in the video description, and I've uploaded my personal running data as well for those who just want to dive in and just practice alongside this video tutorial, but have yet to own a fitness tracker, and maybe at some point you will buy one. Um, these are pretty cheap. I think I got mine. Uh, if you search it up, it, they're probably about 50, $15, dollars, 15 US dollar to about 25 US dollar. They're pretty cheap. Um, I got mine for free. So, and uh, deploying this app is also super easy since it's all front-end code. I'm sure you can replicate this in Flask, but then you also need to get a server of uh, uh, maybe on DigitalOcean or AWS or Azure, etc. Install Python on it and get it going with a web server. With PyScript, deployment is so easy as it's just as, as easy as deploying a static front-end site using Netlify or uh, GitHub Pages. If you also have a Xiaomi Band, uh, this Mi Band, or maybe any kind of fitness trackers that exports data in a similar C CSV format, then feel free to follow along the tutorial using your own running data instead. I'll give you a quick tour about how that is done. If you open up your app, if you uh, launch the app first, go to the Mi Fit service and click on accounts, click on settings, and then within settings, click on the about, and under about, click on the personal information security, and then click on exercising user rights, and then click on export or export CSV. So yeah, there's about like six, seven steps here. Account settings, about personal information security, exercising user rights, export. So it's quite deeply nested and probably not the most obvious place to just put an export to CSV button. Uh, by the way, if you're, uh, depending on where you live, the MeFit app may have been renamed to Zap Life. Um, so for, for example, I live in Indonesia and it's called Zap Life. And once you've done the steps above, you will have a zip file. So what you want to do is to go to your zip file and you want to, if you just want to track your runs, which is what I'm doing here, I don't care about anything else. I only want to track my runs or my outdoor activities, for example. If you run on, uh, if you run outdoor or you run on a treadmill or your walks, this will all be in your sport folder. So slash capital S-P-O-R-T slash folder. There, when you export, you export generally, I think there are like seven folders. There's a lot of other kind of data, um, but I don't care about any of that. I only care about the sport folder. That's what I build this dashboard for. So go ahead and you can rename that, you can bring it to your desktop. If you rather do this later, then just feel free to just go to my GitHub for all the containing code and data and just use my data first and then swap it out to yours whenever you're ready. Uh, if you feel inspired to go and buy a fitness tracker, then use the data I pushed to GitHub to build this out. When your fitness tracker arrives and you start to have some runs, have some data, you can swap it out to yours. Uh, staying physically active is good for you anyway. Uh, if you find this video helpful and feel that you learn coding best by building fun stuff, that's what I do on this channel. I try to teach you coding by building fun mini projects one at a time, and so you uh, yeah, make sure to come back and check back on the other videos I have. Also consider subscribing to the channel and share this video with a friend. Now enough of uh, the background explanation, let's open up our code editor and write some code for video number 6 of the PyScript tutorial series.
Okay, so go ahead and create a directory on your desktop, wherever you prefer. Open that up in Visual Studio Code and you know the drill by now. So let's start by creating index.py. You can just right click on that and just say index. Uh, actually index.html and um, you can use the scaffolding using Amit. So all you need to do is to put estimation mark and then you hit tab. But if you don't have that on your computer, then you could just copy and paste what you've written in the past uh, video tutorial. So that's the standard hit that I usually have. Uh, it would auto clause for you. And so you have doc type, um, there's the, these are all the scaffolding. And then what we did different was we just added these two new lines of code. So there's the PyScript.js and there's PyScript.css. All right. And then within the, uh, within that head tag as well, you want to usually want to have a title. So I want to say title and here you could just put in your own title. We could come back to that later and we just move into body. So let's create body. And, uh, remember you want to close all of this in HTML. So we want to do that there. And so this is how it looks like, right? That's the head tag, that's the UDF8. Now title, what do we want? Um, I'm gonna try and use an emoji somewhere in here as well, just keeping in the theme of, of uh, all the other videos that we have in the series. <laughs> I'm gonna have tracking around. All the videos that we have in the series some, somehow in the, in the title, um, I like to somewhere use a, use an emoji somewhere. And I wanna say this is with my Mi Band. I wanna maybe spell it like um, Mi Band and or Mi Fit. Um, actually, I think they're gonna be separated. So, this is good enough. This is good enough. All right. So we have that. If I want to add some CSS style later, I could also have that. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new file. I'm going to quite style the CSS. So this is going to host all my custom CSS file. And the way I'm going to link them is very similar to that above here. So just uh, control alternate shift to hit it down. And you want to change the link. So this is just going to be style CSS. All right. So now you have style sheet, you have that. Um, if you want to, you could also do a text uh, type equals to text CSS. You can say type and text CSS, right? Uh, and that's kind of it. We could space things out a little bit, make them a little bit tidier somehow. I think like this is fine. So these are all the JavaScript, these are all the CSS, these are the title, right? So we have the basic sort of the scaffolding out already. And then what I need to do next is I want to bring in like uh, create a container to contain all of that code. So let me save this before I do that. And let me just go ahead and take this and right click open with live server. So obviously you can only do this if you have live server, uh, but we talk about that in all the other videos in um, so far in the series. So I don't want to waste any more of your time, but the easy answer is to just search for it. Just search for live server in the Visual Studio Code extension. I don't know why you wouldn't be using um, that. And then there is a live server. So click on that and install that. There's an install button. I, I don't get that button because I've already installed that. So I'm going to go ahead and just say open the live server and that will open that up. So you'll see that there is this thing called, uh, that there's, it says here server is started uh, port 5500 and then live server extension. All right. So now we have that. There is nothing going on here except that you can see that the title bar is a little bit small here. Has uh, you know, it has the tracking run with me band. All right. That's cool. Now what we want to do next is to bring in uh, maybe bootstrap so that we could have the, you know, the styling and all of these things looking good. So let's go ahead. That's fairly easy anyway. So all you need to do is to search, search for it. Just search for Bootstrap and search for CDN and search for, you could get this introduction. Um, the, 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 it says the recommended CDN. All right. And just click on the CSS. So copy that and you want to paste that in as well. So let's go ahead and paste it where you want to paste it before that. So you want to paste it before this, right? So let's copy that and we want to change this to be that link. And then you want to pass your style to CSS. The reason for that is sometimes you want to overwrite what you get from bootstrap. So if you put this before that, then it's going to be loaded first. So it makes sense here that you want to first uh, bring in bootstrap and then you want to put in style CSS to overwrite any of those things that you don't like from bootstrap or you just want to customize it uh, in some ways. Then what else do we have here? We have the JavaScript. So let's also copy that and let's do the same thing up here. So let's copy that down. We don't need the default anymore. We could take that out and we could change the source here to be uh, JavaScript. What I like to do is I like to bring that at the end of the body for JavaScript stuff. Uh, PyScript, I obviously need to be up there, but uh, bootstrap stuff, these are just, you know, sort of nice to have, um, maybe as a bit of uh, animation, as a little bit of uh, an, an effect that just cosmetic anyway. So I don't really need it to load um, very high up there. So I could just bring it right before the closing uh, body tag. Okay. Uh, what else do you need here? So it has the JavaScript and it has the JavaScript bundle. Okay. That's cool. We don't need both of them. 
but we're, we're good we're good at this stage we don't need anything anymore so we close that out we go back to this page and now just to test that things have worked out fine we can go into the body and if this works out fine you should see some sort of container effect so let's go ahead and create div and let's call it give it a class of container and we hit tap so i'm using the amid coding style so in, instead of actually typing out the div and then uh the, the angle bracket the class equal container and then close and then close and then open and then closing tag again uh, instead of doing all of that i'm actually using the amid coding style so i could just do something like what, what you just see there just like container like that and i could also say within that i want to have like a h2 and within that i want to give it a type or a class and it would just um you know, do that for me so you don't want to have spaces you want to say h2 something like this all right um but for, for now, you know, that, that's good enough. We don't need to just to show you what, what it is. If you're wondering, like, how do you type that? What do you do? Basically, that's the Amid coding style. And then you do that, you hit tab, it just uh, expand out the, the rest for you. So we're going to say H2. Um, actually, don't want it to have to be capital. So H2. Uh, within H2, I want to have my tracking run again, this, this title again. So I'm just going to copy that and bring that into H2. What I have now is uh, a simple H2. So I'm going to save off that. And you should see that your app is going to be uh, refreshed, and you can see that okay, that you get you you do get a certain style. So that's coming from Bootstrap. Uh, without Bootstrap, this would all look really ugly. So if you take out the Bootstrap, for example, take this out, and you save it, it doesn't have that H2 effect. Um, but with that, you see that the Bootstrap comes in there and make things a little bit sort of prettier. All right, so this is getting up to um, just getting indexed. We ha actually haven't even gone into high script yet, but this is just the scaffolding, just trying to make things look good now, um, making everything um, you know where, where they're supposed to be, just having that, and then we can inject those code later. So you, if you follow up to this point um, in the tutorial in this series, you know that, uh, that what, what comes next are relatively um, you know very similar to what we've done before. So for example, I want to look at I want to have my let me go into my GitHub. Let me see what I have here. So for example, I want to first have my notable runs. I'm going to create the key statistics later, but I'm going to go ahead and just say my notable runs. And then I want to have my personal best and I want to have my trends. All right. So let's go ahead and just do H4 three times. Right. So I want to say H4 and I want to add a H outline uh, like this. And within uh, the first one, so if you look at what we have, I want to have my tracking runs first. So let's might as well just go ahead and do that. Tracking runs. Okay. And then we want to have a diff. And this div, I want to give it an ID. I want to call it my top stats, meaning the top statistics. All right, so I'm going to call it top stats. And I'm going to uh, do nothing right now, but this is good. So we want to just duplicate that three, uh, two more times. And the next section would be my key statistics. So let's give it, actually, let's let's give it a, a bit of a, a bit more sensible names here. Uh, instead of actually called tracking runs, we want to call it, uh, what do we call it in a screenshot? We have it called uh, key statistics. So let's change that to key statistics. So I'm going to change this. So these are key statistics. And then we're going to copy this three lines and we just say, uh, this is control shift alternate, if you're wondering. And I'm going to also do the same here, just control shift alternate like that. Now the second section would be the notable runs, right? I'm looking at my screenshot so I know what I have here. So in my screenshot, I have notable runs. So I'm going to do that. And in the ID, we're not going to call it uh, key statistics anymore. What we're going to do is we're going to call it uh, notable. So let's just change that to notable. And then we're going to have the next section, which is, uh, I believe it's got trends. Oh, actually, yeah, trends. All right. So let's give it trends as well. And div id that would just be where our dashboard goes right so if you look at my screenshot now you see that there's some fancy on uh, dashboards there so that's just going to be a dashboard all right so the reason i'm creating off this div is that i could then use PyScript to sort of generate that using pandas and then i could inject that into the div and that is where i would hold the output of my python code uh, once you have all of that you could go ahead now and just create the PyScript, and then you could just uh, do the injection and I like to, generally, if you follow my tutorials up to this point, you see that I can do it one of two ways. You see that I, I could do something like PyScript, like this, and then I could have my um, output. So I could have, for example, if I want to put some figures in here, I could say something like top stats. So 
that I could bring in my pandas, I could do all my stuff, and whatever results here, if I print something, it would then be printed into the div ID. That could be one way to doing it. But what I wanted to do now is to make it a little bit cleaner because this is a full flash dashboard anyway. It's not some simple, uh, you know, some simple uh, two sections kind of thing. It's, it's actually a pretty, um, it's going to be quite a, a substantial amount of code compared to the older projects that we do in the past. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of them in a nice folder called uh, scripts. So let's go ahead and just create a new directory and let's call it scripts like this. All right. And within scripts itself, we will then have um, each of those each of the script, let's say one script responsible for dashboard, one script responsible for statistics up here, and we're gonna put them in separate scripts, uh, put, put them in you know separate files, but in within the scripts uh, directory, all right? If you wanna create them in um, using the GUI you could, you could just say control N as well, and you could just save, save them, but I'm just gonna go ahead and just create my dashboard of PY, and then I'm also gonna go ahead and just create my, let's say the top stats, or let's say get statistics, so get stats.py, all right? So I'm gonna have two, one called gas.py, one dashboard.py. We don't need any of that, but let's just create them anyway. And then what I'm going to do is this. Instead of doing the Py script and then writing all my code in there, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to say, take this, and I'm going to say the source of that. And this is, they're going to help you complete that anyway. I'm going to say dot, which is the current directory, and scripts. And then where do I get that from? I'm going to get that from get stats. All right. So this is uh, one Py script. Then I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to have the second one here. And this one, I'm going to call it... Um, I'm going to say this produce results in dashboard. So I want to change this to dashboard. And I want to change this to dashboard as well. So dashboard.py. All right, so I have my PyScript. So whatever it's responsible for generating content within the guest stat, uh, the top stats, that is going to be from this file, getStats.py, which is from here. And whatever uh, is responsible for generating content within the div ID dashboard, that's going to be from dashboard.py. So we're going to write that in there. All right. Now, you also know that I have yet to bring in my dependencies, so that's something that I want to be doing as well before I forgot. So after the title, or before the title, um, it's up to you really, but I like to put them somewhere in the header because that's uh, it makes sense to be in there because it doesn't affect the, the pain of the, the, the content on the body itself. It's something that should be contained in the header itself, So, but it's okay if you put them in the body, right? I want to put pandas. And I know that because I'm going to generate charts and stuff using Altair, I want to also bring that in. So I want to put dash Altair. Okay. And that is kind of, it looks almost all right to me. We could maybe add a comment here to say these are all the CSS files. Um, if you want to bring in um, some sort of like an external uh, font, you could do that. And in fact, I think I'm going to do that. There is this font that I quite like, and that's the Roboto. I'm gonna add a font here. So I'm gonna say add Roboto font, all right. And where do we get that from? We just have to copy that, bring it down. Oops. And control K to delete that, and then remove this, change the CSS here to be this. I think that kind of works. So close that out. So we have link relation, uh, style sheet, and then we have that. Okay, so we have the font. And I think the rest looks pretty good. So let's save all of that. Um, and notice that while we do this, we're just going to have our browser open up on the one side and uh, you will see it on my screen anyway. And the reason for just having it there is so you could very quickly refer to, you know, see if things are looking good, looking wrong, uh, bad, you know, just having the live server open up. So don't bother shutting down the server and then writing code and then reloading that. Just leave it there and just uh, develop your dashboard while keeping it there. Okay. So what what next what's next let's take a look we already have the pi amp so that's the environment dependencies we have the rest here we have the tracking one we have the key statistics i think this is about time where we could start to write the get uh, generate the develop the get stats.py because everything that is from here uh, is going to be thrown out into top stats so let's go into get stats.py and let's start from there now if you have followed um, my earlier videos you know that generally when i declare pandas um as the dependencies, but I, I'm going to read them somewhere. I'm going to read some sort of data frame. I'm going to read some sort of data frame from a remote source. Usually I also need the pyodite.http because that's how I um, use, uh, that's the open URL that I need to sort of read it from a remote source. And also let me just fix this. So uh, I'm going to say, uh, fix the interpreter and I'm going to change that to this so it doesn't complain. Okay. And now I'm going to say from pyodite.http import open URL. Okay. 
Now it's gonna complain if you don't want, if you want it to go away, just import, just sort of install that. But I don't even need to install that actually because uh, Pyoda is gonna give, be given to me when I load in PyScript and that's from the PyScript.js. So I don't really need to worry about the, that, that stuff. I could just ignore that. All right, and then we read up a uh, data frame in here. So where did, the, uh, where did the data frame comes from? Well, it comes from the source and this could be where if you wanted to do it on your, if you want to use your own sort of data frame, then you want to change that. All right. So uh, I'm just going to assume that you're using exactly the same one and then you can swap it out later once you're done with this tutorial. So just use the one I, I gave it to you. Uh, just use the one that I'm providing you here first. And then when you have your own data, when you, you're done and you have some familiarity, feel free to go and swap it out and use yours. So this is kind of my run uh, statistics. So I'm going to go ahead and just say, take this. Um, usually you would be used to doing something like pd.read csv, right? And you would do something like this. But we know that that wouldn't work because what's the point of bringing you open URL in that case? So open URL, we need to enclose that in open URL and then we could do it like this. You could also say URL equals to that. Um, delete this and then you could just say open URL and you could just remove all of this. And you could just say open url and you can have your url in there that's up to you that's probably a little bit cleaner um, more readable i guess uh, shorter lines so that's that's good uh if i save this and i can now print my df so let me go ahead and just print my df dot head just take a look at the first few rows of data now i can close this out later if you go back here let's wait for the browser to fully load okay now you see that the data frame has been printed um, we see that this is not really good looking but what we can do is to just add, attach this to html so this will be printed out uh, in a HTML format. Also, another thing I, I like to do here is that if I look at my CSV, um, I notice that my start time, it looks like this. It looks like this, 2022, 6, 30, 12, 35. So this is actually something that you could use pandas to parse uh, into a, a time format, right? So you could do that. And the way you do that is to just uh, go ahead and just add a parse dates, optional argument. So say parse dates, you specify the name of the column. So if you go and take a look at this, it's called start time. So start time is what you want to be passed as uh, as a date. So I want to say start time. Remember it's case sensitive, so you want to have T being capitalized. So that's good. Now we have DF. Um, if we save that, that nothing should change. It's only now it's just encoded as a date time. All right. Uh, what else do we want to do next? Uh, I want to basically have a, and, and I also realized one thing is that I never run at these hours. I never run at 12.35, 12.31, 12. The reason why I have that is that I'm actually, uh, this is not in the my time zone. I'm in the GFT plus seven time zone. So I want to create another sort of column called date that takes this and shift them by seven hours. So I want to add seven hours to that because that is the actual time when I actually started running. Okay. So all the start time is actually, they, they're lagging by seven hours. So I want to do that. And the way you could do that to create a new column, uh, I think a lot of you would know how to do this. So you could name the column anything you want. I'm going to call it uh, date. And what I need to do is like, I'm going to just say, take that data, take the start time. And I want to add, how do you add seven hours to this? Now you add seven to this by doing time delta. So you want to say from date time, import time date, time delta, right? And here you just have to add time delta, or you could just say date time delta, time delta, right? So let's do that. Now, you may live in a different space, so you don't want to just blindly put hours equals to seven. For me, I live in a GMT plus seven, so that's that's correct. And I could save this if I were to do that, and I print my data frame. I would see the the whole um, data frame now containing the extra new column called uh, uh, time. All right, so let me move it right there, and sure enough, I see date. Um, actually, I don't need all of them to be printed out like that. That that's kind of redundant because then I would have just be able to just uh, code it there directly. So I just want to print them out a little bit nicer. Um, I don't need all the information about minutes and seconds. So I could wrap them and say, take this, use the date time assessor, go and string format time. So that's what SDRF TIME means. And now you just have to pass in a format. For example, I want to have a four digit year. So that's a capital Y. So capital Y, if you want a lowercase Y, then that would just give you two digit year. So you have two, two instead of 2022. So capital Y means a uh, four digit year. And I want to have the month. I also want to have the date, but then what happened next is I want to put a space and just put the hour and the minute. I don't care about the rest of all this stuff. So I could put a space. I could put the hour that's capital H and the minute capital M. And if I were to do that, I should see now that uh, my date is much better formatted, at least to the way that I want it, because in my presentation, I don't need all of them. 
So I have 20, 26, uh, 6, 30, 19, 35. Okay, that looks about right to me. And I could I could, I could, could live with that. That's good enough. Uh, another thing I realized is that there is this thing called a type, right? And within the type, I see 6, 1, 6, 1, 6, 2, all of this. That, so these are, these are the type of the activity itself uh, in the sports data. Now, again, um, this may change if you don't use MeFit or if MeFit updated their API, uh, you know, whatever, uh, you, could, you could change. But for me, uh, if you read the docs, or you just sort of deduce from just looking at the data, you know that a few things. So the first one is walk is going to be type 6 and run is type 1. So that means I could just create a data set called runs that basically contains um, all of the rows where type equals to 1. Okay, so run would correspond to any row where type equals to 1. So we could say something like runs equals to df and now we do our conditioning, our con conditional subsetting. So we say df and that would be type equals to one. Um, I want to say that when I run, I want to track only when um, these are not accidental. So for example, if I do this, this is good enough, but I want to track when the runs are not accidental. So sometimes I run and I run for about 400 meter and I realize that, okay, I'm not doing it. Maybe there's a there's a there's an emergency or something. There's a phone call I need to pick up. So those are uh, those are runs I want to discard. I want to actually only track runs where it's at least uh, one kilometer, one km. Okay, so I would actually go ahead and just put an end condition here and I'll put a second condition and say I want to track where the run like this, where the distance, actually this should be outside of that. And um, the distance of the run and the distance, if you want to see the distance, you could see that it's going to be spelled like that distance and then a, a bracket M. So let's do that. So let's do that. And I want to say that this should be at least or uh, 1,000 or more, all right? And so I want to make a copy of this data frame because we're going to be altering that. We're going to be modifying stuff. We're going to be changing stuff, altering the values, modifying the values. So I want to just make a copy of that. So I now have runs and there are still a lot of these columns that I don't need. For example, I don't really care about the max pace. I don't care even about the mean pace. What I care about, I care about the sort of the distance, the average pace, Maybe not even that because I could deduce that from looking at the sports time, right? So there are a few things that I don't really need and I could drop them. Meaning I would only need the start time, uh, the sport time, maybe the calories is fine, okay? So you could either just do a subsetting by just saying runs and then you just have to put your DF and then just do the same thing again and then this time put all the columns that you need or you could just use the drop to drop the ones you don't need. Um, so you, if you drop, you just have to specify what is it that you want to drop. For example, we have type, uh, max space. Do I have to capital? Yeah. So I actually have like, you just want to just copy and paste if you don't want to make mistakes here, right? So just copy and paste and, and you don't have to worry about typing it correctly. And then I'm going to take mean pace. I'm going to take distance I need. So I'm going to copy this and paste this in as well. And average pace I don't need. So I'm gonna copy that as well. Copy and paste that in just like this. Alright. So you could do it one or two ways. You can either use the drop or you could just select exactly what you want. Alright, but here we're doing it like that. And you could also basically you could either do it like this or you could also just put a dot in place. In place equals to true, like this. So you can say in place equals to true. And that would just drop in place and then you don't have to reassign them. But for me, uh, I wanted to I like this style better, but some of you like the in place, or oh, there's actually a reason why you'll be used in place, you could do that. Um, we're gonna keep it that way. Let's just print the number of runs. We don't need to print this out anymore, but we could, let's just print the number of runs. Um, you could say number of runs first, but it doesn't exist, so we have to create that. And then here we could just say number of runs. That would just be the number of runs dot shape that would give you a tuple of two values, right? The row and the column. So the first value is the row. So that would just show you how many runs there are. And that would be it. Now, if we save all of this um, and you go back to your dashboard, um, so you won't see the table anymore because you removed the print statement for that, but you'll see the number of runs. And that's kind of how we style it. From there, we're going to go and style it and make it prettier. And then we're going to make it slowly and slowly, bits by bits, we're going to make it prettier and we're going to start to have this like 61, right? But we're going to do that. We're going to develop towards that. But right now we, we did get what we want there. So that's good. Let's move on.
Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to be able to maybe create a column that says seconds per km because right now I have the max pace but it's not very intuitive if you try and reason about this it's kind of you, I mean you see that this is the mean pace and you see that um, you know for example you say 2.183 how, how do you interpret that uh, that's that's how many seconds um, to do how many whatever right per meter or something it's, it's not very clear or it's not easy to reason about so what I want to do instead is I want to create something called a seconds per km and then I can convert seconds per km to minutes per km and so it's easier. So for example, I could do something like, um, we could, I guess we don't even need to keep that there. We could say something like runs per km, uh, actually runs, we want to say minutes per km first. I don't need minutes per km, but let's do it anyway. So minutes per km. So if I look at the distance per meter, right, the distance m, it says this is uh, one meter, right? So I want to take 1000 divided by that. Runs. And I want to put distance m. Maybe it's a good time to just rename the column so that you don't have all these like brackets and stuff. But anyway, let's just keep at it. And then from there, uh, you want to multiply that by, or you want to first divide that by how long uh, this activity is there for, right? So minutes per cam would be a different calculation. So let's skip to seconds because it's easier right now and then we could generate the minutes later. So I want to take this and then I want to multiply that by runs sports line. And remember, there is also the S there, and this is have to correspond to this sports sign. So now I have seconds per, uh, per km. So just using the distance meter and using the sports time second, and do some simple math to generate that. I guess now we could go ahead and print runs, but you also want to put two HTML, all right? And actually, you just want to hit. You don't want to print the whole thing. So let's do that and add two. We could remove this. Save that. So if you pay attention to the seconds per km, you see that th this is actually, you're going to have to divide this by 60 in order to get the minutes per km. So if you divide it by, four, by 60, for example, this would end up to be somewhere close to 4 minutes. This is slightly under 4 minutes because 4 times 60 is 240. So I run this within uh, 4 minutes, the first km within 4 minutes, um, the, and, and, and so on and so forth, right? So you will need to add another divided by 60, but I'm just going to keep it at seconds per km because if I need to display them, um, in fact, actually, what I could do is I could create a simple function that did uh, that that shows it that sort of show the minute and then the second in a in a in a sort of in a format that I I like I personally like right. So let me go and show you what I mean by that. If I go and create a extra terminal and I say Python, all right, and let me clear the screen. So there is something called a diff mod. So if I say diff mod and I take the first value, so this is two three eight point seven six, right? Let me just copy all that and I put it into diff mod. And let me show you what I mean by by, by this, yeah? So paste that in there. And I'm gonna put divide and mod 60. Uh, it can't do that because it's not a string, so let's not pass it as a string. Well, you see that the, the first one is three minutes and then the next one is 58.76 seconds. So I can read them as three minutes, 58.76 uh, seconds. And I can pass in a second value as well. So I can pass this in, for example, 230 and copy that. And within here, I can pass div mod as well, and I pass that value in. And again, I put 60, so 60 seconds. So run that. Now I have three minutes and 50 seconds. So the second run takes me about three minutes and 50 seconds to complete one round, uh, one, one kilometer. All right, so I could use this and I could then format that because this is a tuple, I can then unpack them. Um, so the way I could do that is I could say something like minute seconds, and actually just do this and I could say, the first value is the minute, the second value is the second. So I can just do a tuple unpack and I have M and S, then I can print M, I can print S and I can format them. And the way I could format them is I could do something like, take this, you could use the format or you could use the F string, right? But I wanna have like a, I wanna have this as the minute. So, and I wanna mean it to be only up to two decimals. So I could do something like this and I can say something like zero two and then I wanna have nothing of the decimal. And here I wanna have zero two as well but I want to have maybe up to two decimal because it could be like three minute 44.665 seconds. So I want to have up to two decimal and then I could then put in my format and I could put my M and I could put my S. So now it looks like this and that's kind of how I read it is I say it's three minute 50.31 seconds and that's that's I think that's good. So what I can do is I can just put create a function up here and to use them uh, later in my script. So I'm going to say define and I'm going to say create minute and seconds and I'm going to take one argument. What is that? That's the number of seconds, right? 
And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to return the minute and second by using the diff mod uh, technique that I show you here. So I'm going to say diff mod and whoops. Then I'm going to pass in seconds and I'm going to pass in 60, just exactly like how I show you. And I can just return a simple string and the string would just be somewhere like this. So I can just copy off this and going to control one to go back to the editor and I'm just control V to paste that back in there. And that's kind of how I'm going to return that. Um, I won't, you won't see anything in the front end because we haven't really even used that yet. We just created the function. So what we need to do is to use it, right? So I can create a new column here and let's maybe bring the print statement all the way to the bottom. And I could create, I could take this and I just want to change things here. I want to, instead of seconds per km, I want to say speed per km. Okay. So this is the minute and second. And I want to say, take that and first use the runs per seconds per km. And how do you apply this to each one of the value in here? How do you take that and then apply this to every value in here? So the first value, second value, third value, how would you do that? Now, you, the way you do that is to just use a, the map, all right? Um, if you use, if you use if this is a pandas series, the map it makes the most sense. If you're trying to use it on a data frame, on a pandas data frame, then you want to use the apply, all right? For me, maps makes the most sense right now, so let's do that. And then I want to pass in a lambda. Um, this is just an anonymous uh, shortcut function, and I want to say create ms and pass in x. All right, and now we could then uh, just to just to maybe print um you know make 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 more sense of it. Let's just sort everything by speed per cam uh, or maybe by seconds per cam because this is all now going to be formatted into a string. So you can't really sort them by string or that it doesn't make sense to sort them by string. It makes sense to sort by number though, and seconds per cam is a good good way to sort sort by that. So let's go ahead and say runs, and we could say runs dot sort values. Oops, sort values, and you want to say by what? Um, so here it's going to just be seconds per cam. Okay. Now I know some of you will still like to do the in place. You can also pass in an in place and just say in place equal to true. Um, generally I, I tend to favor the other coding style better. I tend to just like to say runs equal and be more explicit rather than, uh, not, nothing wrong with the other. The other is also pretty explicit. So it gets like kind of a, a coding preference. I like to see that. Okay. I overwrite that and pass them into the sort of point that to runs again. All right. So that's how, how I'm going to do it. I'm going to save all of that. If we did this part correctly, then we should see that in the HTML table that it is now sorted and you can see the fastest run would be up there, then the second fastest run, then the third fastest run, then the fourth fastest run, and you can see them sorted out in that in that manner. And so that makes sense. All right. Uh, another thing I like to do, if I look at my data here in my web app, I see that the distance itself, I don't, it's very rare that you usually run, it's very rare that you run exactly 1000 meter for one kilometer, right? It's very rare. Usually you tend to run and then by the time you hit your stopwatch or you reach for your band, uh, there are maybe one or two seconds that pass or maybe half a second that pass and then you run a little bit more than one, one kilometer, maybe one or two more meters uh, beyond that first kilometer. So. Uh, I actually wanted to time this, I wanted to measure my speed, but I also want to be able to group them into like whether I run the 1 km or rather 2 km or 3 km or 4 km. So in that case, the, what would make sense for me is to sort of create a new column that basically take this and round them closest to uh, let's say 1000, right? So instead of uh, having 1003, I want this to actually be 1000 so that I can group number row number 4, row number 47, a 43 and number 7 together into a same group, All right? So. Uh, I'm going to just call them runs and uh, I'm going to say distance and I'm going to say rounded. And you could then go ahead and just round this up, right? Now, there are a few things you can do here when you do something like runs. For example, you could take like, let's say if I run 1070, 1070 all right? If I take this and I pass in a round, right? I could say decimals. Now, a lot of you did not know this, but I could take this, uh, the, but this will not work because this is not a panda series. So let's do pd.series. And let's pass in the list. Let's say 1070, 1060, 1061.7, and finally 1077. All right. And we sit round. I don't even think we import pandas yet. So let's import pandas as pd. Okay. Now let's do this. And let's say decimals equals to. Now, if I put in a 1, you see that now they, they all added the a 1 there, right? If I add this value and I add 107. 7.91, right? What would happen is that the 9 1 become 1. No, I become 9 because I say decimals to 1. If I put decimals to 2, now I'm just going to add two, two, 2 digits behind the, the, the dot there, 
all right but what you may not know you could do is you could put a negative number for decimals so i could do something like decimals equals to negative three and that would just round everything to the closest 1000 so if i were to change this value and i add somewhere between this i add a two one two three one five uh point four see what happened is that now i have 1000 1000 2000 and 1000 all right as well i want to show you what happened if i then pass in something like 1894 93.44 now what, what should happen here right remember decimals if i put a negative uh three it basically runs to the nearest thousand right if i do this you would expect that this gets round up to two thousand um and this will if you change this negative two you see that now it gets round up to the closest hundred and if you say negative one it gets rounded to the closest tens right so three rounded to the closest one thousand and that's okay but if we if if we were to use this code in our script there is a problem here is that i will then count my 1.8 uh, meters run I would my 1.8 kilometers run I will count that as a two kilometer run and that's kind of cheating so if I only run for one if I run exactly 1893 I can only count for uh, it can only belong to the 1000 meter run category it cannot belong to a 2000 because I cannot round up I can only round it down so how would you how would you go about and write uh, writing this if you use the decimals equals to three uh, you are gonna give yourself credit for runs that are like 1600 meter right so if this 1593 it still be counted as 2000 even though um it doesn't you you didn't run for 2km so if you give yourself credit for that you're gonna uh, sort of uh, give yourself a much better running score than you really deserve all right so 1.5 km 1.593 km should only belong to the one kilo kilometers uh, category because you haven't completed even 2000 so you only can you can only round uh down you cannot round up right so another way to achieve the same effect is to just use the floor division right and that would just uh, round it down all right so i'm gonna just go ahead and say this and i'm gonna take my runs and what do i name it i say distance and then bracket m so let's say distance and i have my m and then what i have with this i could take that and divide that by 1000 and in fact i actually want this to be after dividing by 1000 i want them to be a category i want them to be a factor of two levels so category is either 1km 2km 3km 4km so if if in my runs i'm only running one or two km so i'm only going to have a factor of level uh, of two levels but if you have you know 3000 4000 5000 that's fine it's still going to round it down and you're still going to get um those appropriate levels anyway so none of this is hard coded so i'm going to take all of this and i'm going to say s uh, type and pass in category because if this is a category, I can then use some really clever group by. For example, I could create a new uh, data frame called runs, and I could say runs dot group by, and group by what? I could group by distance rounded, so distance rounded, and then from there I could go ahead and say take that value. Oh, I want to put this in a position, and I want to only take a look at the top three runs. I could do something like that, and I no longer want runs. I want to have instead best runs. Right. So let's save all of that. And once you save, you should see that the you know PyScript kicks into action and try to generate that. And now we have the best runs for the one kilometer and for the two kilometers, right? So I only have like one, so it appears there. But this is this actually belongs to notable runs. We already know that it belongs to notable runs, so that's good. So I'm gonna go back to index.html and I'm gonna say this one should all of this should go appear under notable because I'm really done with like sort of my part one. I'm gonna have to do my part two and part three, but this stuff, the best runs should go under notable runs. And if you compare the data that you see into uh, with the dashboard, you see that they are actually the same, except I have some formatting here to make it look nicer, but they're pretty much the same, right? So let's do a little bit more. Um, let's go back to our tracking run. If you care about formatting, you could do that. Um, I also wanna probably show you a couple of things when you do something like print, um, you know, what are things that you should be how, how do you make it print better right that's kind of what i want to say so for example in the best runs and stuff i see that there are still a few category that i probably don't need i probably want to i want to date i want to sort them a little bit right why, why is the date all the way at the, uh you know at, at, at this column i don't need to start time anymore so i want to sort them out a little bit so i could go ahead and just quickly do a sorting let me turn away the side bar, uh, sidebar and i could do something like this and within it i want to date so the way you specify this will also determine at what order they come out when you display them, right? So I want to first have the date, and then I want to have um, speed per km, and I want to have 
uh, I don't know if I care for calories but I know that it's in my screenshot so let's keep it there um, and then I want to have distance rounded and I think that's about it I think that's kind of what I want I don't really think I need anything else um, or what could be useful is to not have the sort of the row number that is next to it that's pretty annoying so what I want to do instead I want to set the date to be the row number instead so we know how to do this um, don't we so we go ahead and instead of saying dot hit we just gonna change that to dot set index and pass in what is it that you want to set all right so in this case here what do we call it we call it date so I want to say date Uh, if this is getting a little bit too long, you can just maybe tap it in and you can say date, date um, and now if you do that, it's going to append that um, sort of the, it's going to just append that as a, append that as a, as an index. What you really want is to put it in the front. So you could just reset index. And then I guess that's kind of it. Let's save off this to make sure that it looks okay. Um, I also want to show you a few more techniques that you can use. So for example, now it looks okay. There's the 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, but still you don't, you don't want a 0, 1, 2, 3. So what you can do is you want to turn that off. And in the 2HTML, you can actually pass an index equals to false. And that is going to just take away the 0, 1, 2, 3 that you see on the row number, sort of the row number, you can remove that. Uh, another thing you can do with the 2HTML is you can also specify the column spacing for each one of them. So I, I, I know that date is going to be pretty long because I see that it is pretty long. So I could specify like call, uh, let's say column space. I could do something like column space and I can specify that. And because I have one, two, three, four columns, I have one column, speed per km, second column, calories, third column, distance rounded, fourth column, then I want to pass in a, val uh, four, uh, a list of four values. So every other column should be the same except date. I want date to be longer, twice as long. So I'm going to say 50, 50, 50 for the rest. And uh, just the first one, I'm going to have 100. All right. And from there as well, I could go ahead and maybe give it an ID so that I could identify that later so i could say something like table id equals to what do we call this we call it best runs okay um anything that you can identify this with and i want to just identify with best runs and another one i could do is i could say justify i could say justify it so that it aligns somewhat in a certain direction and so i can say justify as well uh, again if this is too long you just have to tap everything in there so you don't have to uh, keep scrolling and it's probably better that way anyway uh, make less mistakes when you can see everything together in one go and then um let's save all of that let's save all of that and let's let it refresh every time you save it it should refresh okay so now this is a lot larger but then this is still uh, the rest are still the same uh width if you need to add a bit more you could but we're not going to even worry about that because we can just add our bootstrap classes and make it look a lot better uh, without having to manually do this because it could get quite tedious trying to change that or you could just use this for let me show you you could inspect element and now if you look at this you will see that your div id now has a id the table has an id called best runs and the reason you get that is because you specify table id so that's going to give it an id to this element and you can use css to sort of style that you could for example go to your css so controls p and then style css and you can say best runs and you can say all of this font weight would be 900 make it really really bold or something and uh, all of them would have a big bold font and you can if you want to change the color to be like red you could uh, actually it's not font color it's just color also you need to put a semicolon you could also do that but why would you do that it makes things look uh, ugly anyway so you probably don't want to do that right but you could say like color equals red and this looks makes everything look very obnoxious um, but you could do that, right? That's, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to delete off this because it's, it's scary and uh, frankly unnecessary. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to rely on Bootstrap. We're not going to use the ID unless we have to later. If we want to change things up, uh, maybe more customize it a little bit, we can. We can. But right now, we don't have to worry about that. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to add a table. So what you could do is after justify, you could add another comma and you can say classes. And you can pass in a list of all the classes you, uh, you want this HTML element to have. So sort of the way you use in ID, we just pass in an ID and have the table printed out with the ID. So that's that ID get assigned. You can also assign some classes to it. I want to assign the class table and I want to say table strip to make it um, stripe, I guess. Stripe, yeah, stripe. And uh, table, I want to make it bordered. So table bordered. So these three classes are from Bootstrap. And when you add them, it just makes it look better already just through the power of bootstrap so that there we have it 
uh, looks better already. Um, if you want this table to be printed with a dark, uh, sort of a dark theme, you just have to add table dark to it. So say table dark and save it. And now it should be printed out with dark table. And there you, there you go. So you have speed per cam, you have calories, and you have distance runner. And that looks okay. Now these are all your notable runs because you have uh, your two cam run, these are your best time. Your one cam run, these are your best time. So these three are your best time, all right? Take a look and see what else do we have left. Um, we have notable runs, right? That's cool. But uh, what else do we need? We also have personal best, right? Personal best. We also want to have a personal best. So let's go ahead and create the personal best uh, table as well, right? Let's bring it back to our main app here. And we could go ahead and say pb equals to runs dot group by and so runs basically uh we, we 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 stop here right we have the distance rounded so we could also again group by distance rounded so let's go ahead and just do that again because personal best would just show you the best time you have on average and uh, the, the, your average time and your best time and it will show you it should show you this number and it should show you this number but it should also show you the average for example so on average when i run one kilometer how fast do i run i want to know that and for every on, on on average if i run two kilometer how fast do i run i also want to know that so i want to have this number side by side with an average number so let's go ahead and do that right so let's say it runs good by um distance rounded this is exactly the same as what you have up here which is this one, it's uh, group by, it's exactly the same, except now you wouldn't be looking at the top three anymore. So what you want to see is that you want to take that and you want to do some sort of aggregate, aggregation. Um, you could actually go ahead and do minimum like this. And that would just show you the minimum. So you could say print BB, and it would just show you a group by all of them and then show you the fastest speed you have, right? That would just give you the fastest speed, that would give you a top speed, and you would have, um, for example, I could see uh, it's pretty bad looking because I haven't printed them into HTML. But I could see that there is my fastest one, which is here, 0454.85 and 035031. I can see these two numbers there. But uh, I don't just want the minimum. I also want the average, the mean, right? So instead of doing this, or instead of doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the dot .agg, which stands for aggregate, and I'm going to pass in both of them. So I can say minimum and average. I can do both of them. So I want the mean to come first and then the minimum to come later, all right? And that would basically give you two columns. One is the mean and the second one is minimum. So one is the average, one is the minimum, all right? And then uh, obviously this is not looking good because we haven't done the sort of two HTML thing. So let's do that to HTML and then we'll print that into a nice sort of nice HTML format, all right? Okay, so now we see the .html format. We see that, the, okay, that's the best. This is the best run. The best run is gonna be this one, the minimum. Oh, you see that it also tried to do the same statistics for all other columns. So that's also not doing what we want. We actually only care about the seconds per cam. So we want to just maybe subset from that and just say seconds per cam. Because otherwise, it would just try to do the aggregation on every other numeric column. And that, that just isn't what we want. So let's save that. Uh, also, by the way, we also want to rename the axis because we don't want the whole thing to be printed out like distance rounded. That just makes no sense for most people. Um, instead, we want to call it from distance rounded, we want to call it distance cam, for example. So when I say rename uh, axis, rename axis, and we want to just call it distance kilometer. Okay, and that is quite close to what we want now. I don't want to see the seconds. I actually want to also use the, you could use the map now. You could just use the map to sort of map the two of them. Um, but let me show you first if you could do mean and you can say take this and say PB mean. And then you can say take that map and do the same thing lambda x and then create ms and then say x okay and we're going to copy that now we're going to change this so control d control d change this to minimum and that will do and now we save all of this so we can have our personal best being printed out um i want to actually have like these two table between them if i look at my screenshot i will see that there is also this is there, there is a, a a fourth level heading that says personal best. So it's not just notable run and then directly there, right? So I actually have a personal best table. Let me show you what I mean. So there is a table up here and then there's a table down here, right? So be between them, there is a header for called personal best. So I wanna actually have that. So how do I, before I print the table, I wanna say print. And now I wanna say h4 and I wanna close h4 and I wanna say personal best, okay? And then within the HTML itself, I want to do the same thing as what I've shown you, which is to remove the, reset the index first. Um, this is similar to what I've shown you earlier. And then I want to take away the row number. So index, 
and index equals to false so that will take away the row number and i think i mean since we have the table id up there right like this we could also have the table id in here so let's go ahead and say um table id and this is just personal best so let's name it personal best so we can target them later by css uh, id if you want to justify is just going to be justify just kind of the same thing up there and classes honestly are going to be exactly the same thing so don't even bother to try and type the whole thing up just put the same thing in here i wish there is like a way you can set like some global config and all the tables should inherit that you could do that i mean in the way you could do use just maybe use javascript to inject them um but let's keep everything in pandas so nice and tidy okay so we have our personal best heading for and there we go there you have it so you have a notable run these are your best runs and then your personal best so there's a two table right there um just to make everything looks good I guess you could go ahead and just open up your style CSS now and you could just maybe change all the font. So for example, in the HTML, this would control, this would target everything in the HTML, all right? And I could have my font family and I could bring in Helvetica, new, and I wanna target Helvetica next, I wanna target Arial next, I wanna target Sans Serif. The reason why the first one is in quotation mark is because it's gonna be, um, there is a space between them. So that's the reason we put them in quotation mark. And then next thing I want to do is to change all the body to be something like, let's try and find new, a good color. Um, I would say something like maybe 555, 555. Uh, if that's not dark enough, no, that's definitely not dark enough. Let's say 2222. Uh, and if it's still not dark enough, and now it's a little bit too dark, but I guess, um, I guess you could do like something like 323. I mean, just find a, find a value that works for you. Now all of your text is going to be, so I guess your color should be all white now, just to compensate for that back, dark background. So color is just going to target all the font colors. So we let's just do that. And now we have a, they, they, we come quite close now. We have the tables and um, we we're probably, adding, I, I would say like we're about 50% done now. All right, so let's turn off the style.css. Let's get back here. So we have the guestdesk.py and that's good. Now let's open up analytics.py or the dashboard.py rather and start working on that as well, shall we? So you could just uh, control P to open up the, uh, the palette and just the file, the file mover and just move into dashboard of PY, hit enter and you have nothing. So let's start from that. So what do we have in getStats.py? Let's put them side by side. We have very similar things, right? So we want to bring in pandas. We want to bring in, actually not very similar. We don't really have that much things anyway, but let's, okay, copy of that. Um, we, we know that in dashboard, we're going to use Altair, so we might as well bring that in already. So import Altair as ALT and URL. Okay, now we can turn this one so we have more space to look at. Now, let's say we only want to look at the trends for our 1KM. We don't want to look at all of that. So we could go ahead and change this a little bit. We could maybe, uh, instead of this data, I actually have another data in my data folder in here. These are all my 1KM runs. These are very easy to generate, so I'm not going to waste too much time explaining to you how I generate them. Uh, but basically they are just the same. I just subset for all the 1KM runs. That's it. All right, so let me go back. All of these are gonna be on my GitHub if you wanna copy them. But I already have the URL, so I'm gonna paste that in here. And what happened next, you already know, um, they are just gonna be my URL and I'm just gonna say this on my run 1KM. Just to make sure that I fully understand what I'm working with. I'm gonna say pd.readcsv and I'm gonna say open URL and I'm gonna pass in my URL. Um, you could, if you want to, put in the parse dates as well. So this is similar to how you did the get stats. You have the whole parse date system, you could also do that. But um, it's probably not even necessary anymore at this point because you're gonna just uh, delegate everything to Altair. But if you want to, you could. So just save parse dates in here. And then let's try to create our charts. I think this is kind of a good time to just create our charts. Everything else you will sort of use Altair to sort of uh, get the effect anyway. You could use that to do some aggregation, do some transformation. I'll talk about those things later when we get there, right? But let's go ahead and create a base uh, graphic and then let's include that in our base graphic. So let's go ahead and say base. And the way you create the Altair chart is you say Altair alt.chart and then it'll ask you for a source. It says data equals to undefined. So it wants a source of your data. And so for us, we're just gonna pass in our data frame. So that's gonna be one run, one km. And we're gonna use encode. So this is very similar to the graphic of uh, gram grammar of graphic system where in the ggplot system, you say, um, you know, you say something like ggplot and then you pass 
data equals to df and then you say aesthetic and then you map x to something y to something right so this is very similar or you can map color equal to something so encode is where you put all of that you know the x your y your color so we have the x we have the y we have the color now for the x what do we want we can use alter x and within that what are the columns that we have here so let's take a look um, let's open up the data so we see that there is a stop time there's a spot time uh, there's all of this bunch of things right now what we want is to we want to use a stop time and so let's pass that in so that's stop time and because this is a time format we want to put in a time format uh, a column t to tell it that it's a it's a time format so pass it as a time format that's why i said you don't even need to use the parse states in here because you're going to specify in here anyway so you could save yourself there um but let's give it a title as well uh, actually let's not even worry about title let's just do the simplest thing first right and then you want to have y remember how i said you want to have the encoding you have the I, x and y so what do you want a y to be now i want a y to be the seconds per km because i want to actually visualize that in a in a trend right so i want to say seconds per kilometer and this you could pass in a q to, to indicate quantity right q stands for quantity uh n stands for nominal for example but for now uh, if if it can infer from its own then you don't have to pass in anything so you could also you know save yourself some some typing there um we're going to come back and add those things in there later anyway and then color you could have color you don't even need a color you could just say odd color but i like to when x and y is quite clear i don't actually need to specify x equals to y equals to but color i like to do that and i like to say odd alt, color and i want to color them by certain things for example in this case i want to color them by day and they um that doesn't exist yet because there is no such a thing as day in here so how do i do that how do i um how do i get that right so i could actually use or test function by doing day, something like day and stop time and what this will do is that in Altair, when you do something like day, it's going to find the weekday given a certain time. So it's going to look at this time and it's going to just deduce the day from, from it. And uh, if it can infer the day from that time, and usually it could if your start time is properly formatted, then um, that would just replace the value. And so this thing is just a simple transformation of a time unit from the raw time to the actual to the day of the week. All right. And so that's our base. And we could take the base um, if we just print out the base. Let's see get back in here okay it says required mark is a prop uh, is a required so we don't really have anything here yet so we could go ahead and just take encode and we could say uh base and we can say mark let's say mark line now if you take the mark line and you pass it up here and you save it and you want to add an ordinal here so these are day ordinal or, or, this are uh, um in in orders of day so sunday monday tuesday wednesday hmm, yes what about n yeah the n would be correct because it would then be nominal and now this would be fine right so there's the sunday monday tuesday wednesday so this is a, a monday and then so on and so forth um this looks okay it, it does look a little bit scary when this is the whole thing is black and then there's this big white background in there so we can fix that um but what i wanted to explain here was that if i add the mark line after the encoding doesn't really apply to it so what i did was actually it, it should because we just encode that and we could do that i think that the, the the problem is that we forgot to sort of um, mark this as a nominal and this was why you want to be specific just add a, a queue to, to make to mark it as a quantity so now this is time this is quantity this is nominal right so category go order, uh, order so now it looks okay right so we can just sort of keep to it but let's fix the back the the dark background um to do that Altair actually has some sort of render. You can sort of change how it appears on a global setting. And so what I like to do is I can, actually I may even want to do it very high up here. Maybe you want to change all the way up here. And what you can do is you can say Altair renderers dot set embed options theme equals to dark. And let's save that renderers. <laughs> so it's getting dark, it's getting late and Time for another cup of coffee but okay now it looks okay now it blends into the rest of the sort of the theme and it looks okay all right it looks okay could be improved but it looks okay now so we have the base we have the uh mark line and the the cool thing about using altera and and using uh systems like ggplot and altera is that you can progressively add to it so for example if i want to maybe add uh so let me show you what i mean by that right so if i want to this is the base if i take away the mark line then there will be no marks at all so I could go ahead and say something like take that and then layer on top of the base 
a set of points first. And the points we just built on the mark, just like how I built on top of the uh, base down here. But now instead of mark line, I like to say mark circle. And you can overwrite any values in the encoding. So for example, all of these are encoded already that it would inherit, but you could also overwrite them. And you overwrite them by passing in encode again. And then in encode, you can now pass in a few other things you want to uh, sort of encode. And for example, I want to change the points on my, uh, on my, on my mark circle. So of the points, I want to change them to be, um, you could change them to be like 0 0.4 if you want to, for example, right? Um, so you can see something at like 0 0.4. And you can maybe even change them to have like two tip, right? So if I hold over certain points, what do I want to see? And I can say, if I do that, I want to look at the months. Um, I don't have the months, so I could use a transformation, but I can have distance M. I could have the date, calories, kcal. Don't know why I care about calories. To me, I never really care about that. To me, it's really more like doing it more for my own fitness, for my own health. I uh, couldn't really care about my calories, uh, just more about my cardio, just making sure I have, uh, you know, enough, uh, 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 I use my lungs enough. <laughs> so speed per km, and let me save all of that, and now nothing would appear because I haven't really done anything yet. So what I could do as well is I could say lines equals to base plus mark line, and then I could say points plus lines, like this. You don't really need the sort of bracket if you only have these two. But let's just add it because I can then add another one like like this and, and build on that. But right now, let's take a look. Now we have the points. It's a little bit faint. You can't really see them. But if you screen hard enough, you will see them, right? So they are there. It's very faint. Um, and then if you hover over, you definitely see the, the pop over, the, the sort of the two tip, right? So if I hover over. So I guess a few things need to change here is that I want to make my points a little bit sort of maybe a little bit more obvious. Um, so instead of point 0.4, you want to make it 1, for example. So make it a little bit more obvious and if we scroll down now okay now the points are a little bit more obvious but it's, e it's e also easier to just point at them now see that i can point at them and i can say okay on this day i run uh, three minutes and 54 seconds 54.3 seconds okay that's okay but i want to actually have the date on that as well and how do i have the date on that Rafael? i can also use another transformation so in one of my columns i have the start time but i don't actually want the start time I don't want a start time because the start time is just going to be a whole bunch of things, right? Just a lot of information. That's just, just a whole string. So what I can do is I can use Altair's excellent um, transformation. This is actually not even Altair. This is actually Vega Lite, but Altair is just kind of the Python library built for that. So we transpile them down to uh, uh, Vega and Vega Lite. But we could take month date, for example, and pass start time in there. If you want to read more about this, you can go to Altair date transformation and you could click on time unit transformation and you see these are all the things you can do you can call year year quarter year quarter month so if i don't want to see one date i want to actually see the whole date i could say year month date uh, for example uh, i could see hours hours minutes hours minutes seconds and stuff so there are uh, this is the documentation um you could i won't walk you through all of that because our point is to build out this dashboard but it would be nice to just link them and then you could uh, read more about that later if you want to all right Another thing I could do is I could maybe make that hover a little bit. If I hover over this line, I want to highlight this line. So I want to make this line a little bit thicker when I highlight or uh, um, sort of hover over it. So give it a bit more interactivity as well, and it's easier to single out which one that I'm looking at. Because to me, I want to look at every all my runs on Friday and all my runs on Monday. How do they differ? So I want to see the trend a little bit more clearly. So to do that, I could go up to base, and I can create something called a highlight. This could be name anything you want, but I'll call it a uh, highlight. And then I'll use the Altair selection. And selection, I want to say that when I point to a single point, I want you to highlight that area. So a single point is single. So I'm going to say type equals to single. And then I want to say when I select on what? You could say on, uh, there, there are multiple options here, but you could look at this. And uh, what, I want to, uh, what I want to is to have it on mouse over. So not on click, not on anything, but on mouse over. Okay. So on mouse over, I want it to highlight a certain thing. I want to say that that's a single point and then what should I be, what should I be, uh, what should be the fill that gets highlighted? So for me, it's the color. I want the color fill to be highlighted. So I want to say fills equals to, and what is the name of this, of this um, thing again? It's called day start time, right? So because I'm going to actually be repeating them, I'm going to be using them. I'm going to sort of move this out so like this. I'm going to move this out. 
And I'm going to say take, take this and just explicitly call it transform time unit because I'm going to reuse this anyway. And I'm say day equals to day um, like this. And now I could just use day and give it n and make sure I wrap them all up like this. Right? So now I could reuse this day as well in here. All right. So let me save all of that. Um, I believe I must have encode and then transform time unit like this. Okay, save this. Um, in that case here, I don't need this anymore. Actually, I could keep it there. Um, and now, okay, so I have my selection. And now I have uh, also, uh, by the way, I want to say that if I did not exactly specify or touch on that point, I want to basically still be able to select that. So the way I do that is I just pass in the nearest equals to true. So they're saying that if, um, you know, wherever my mouse is, just the nearest point to that would be would be the one I want to select. So I don't have to be so precise, move my mouse over to exactly this point. If I move my mouse even to this point, it will still be selected because the nearest will be true. So I can set up the highlight there. And the highlight itself is not going to do you do anything for you because you didn't even add the uh, highlight into the base or the points or the lines. So what I want to do is I want to say that take this and then apply that to points first. So you go, you do that by going in here and you want to say add selection and you pass in highlight. So that's how you do the highlight, right? So now I could then use the highlight and the points will now have the selection that I could hover over and I don't need to be precise anymore. You see that I could just go around anywhere and no matter what it is, I always get a start time. This is February of 5, February 14, February 16, March of 5 and then March 18, April 10, April 13, April 15, I could see all of that even without being precise anymore because I have the nearest equals to true. So I don't need to be so precise as to where I'm pointing, it would always find me the nearest point and it would give me that two tip. So this is really good. It's really just good for UX, good for UI anyway. Um, we don't have to sort of like uh, uh, tr try to pinpoint a specific point before the, the two tip comes up, all right? So now it says that if you if uh, your mouse, if you use the mouse over, this effect, this effect will apply on the points layer. But what about the lines? I told you that if I want to hover over, I want the lines to be slightly thicker so that it's easier to spot that trend and then to trace that trend in a way, right? So in the mark line, this is where I could overwrite that encode as well. Um, because in, in the mark line itself, I want to have the size be mapped to that, to that condition. So I want to say size of the line will be mapped to that condition. So you say odd condition. Every time you see odd, it's basically just inherit from the Altair package, right? Uh, I want to say depending on highlight, if it's not highlighted, give it a value of one. If it's highlighted, whoops. If it's highlighted, give it a value of, I don't know, let's try three. Let's see if three looks good. If not, we can change things, right? And so now it would give all of that a certain, um, it would make the size a bit more dynamic. If I hover over, look at that. Now it looks good. Because now it would just pop up, uh, the yellow line pop up, the purple line, the blue line, you see that? Um, and so now, whatever, wherever my mouse is, the nearest point will just get pop up and it would just look a lot better now. And I kind of like it now, right? Uh, another thing I like to do is I like to be able to zoom in and zoom out um, and move in and out of this uh, grid. So I could do that in sort of one line of code. I could just add an interactive here, like this. So interactive make it possible to zoom in and zoom out and you know select different things and tap on things and stuff. So let me show you what I mean by that. I could now zoom in and drag and now I could still look at all the different lines. You see that? It's pretty cool, right? Um, and we could zoom out and sort of drag around. All right. so that's kind of what we have now and I think it looks okay. The legend is pretty obnoxious though, like it gives you the whole thing. Um, I don't really want that, so I could uh, first of all, I want to move it to the left because I want to make space for another plot on the right. So I want to move this to the bottom left. So how do we go about this? Now this legend is mapped to the color. So we want to specify that in color. Let's go back all the way to the points or to the base even here. Um, instead of calling it day, I want to give it, I want to rename the legend title to be day of week. So let's go and change that. So first thing I want to do is I want to say title and I want to say this is just the day of week. All right. And then what else I want to have? I want to have legend and I want to say alt legend. Uh, I want to change that. And within this, I want to say title of that. Actually, now that I have the off I could move this in here as well, um, right? And I don't need title here. Uh, I could just maybe have orient and make them maybe bottom left. 
So this is the orientation of that. And I also want to format this to be time. Um, and I want to change the format of that. I don't want to see the entire thing, right? So you could say, just look at the day or look at the week. For example, I could say something like format and I could say something like uh, year, year, month, 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 month. And I could say year, year, month, month, and ish. But I know that if I would just want to see the, the sort of Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, the week name itself, I could use either lowercase a or capital case a, uh, a. If it's a lowercase a, it's just going to show the abbreviated. So it's going to say M-O-N for Monday, T-U-E for Tuesday, W-E-D for Wednesday, and T-U-H-U for Thursday. If I put a capital A, it's going to show me the full name. And I think I would prefer the full name at this point. So I'm just going to keep it there and just put a capital A just to see the full thing. And now it looks like uh, it's all set and it's better now. It's a lot better now. And we could still, everything still works as usual. So we let's build our second plot on the right. Okay, now on the right, if I show you what I have here, so on my right, I have two plots. The first one, this is basically a grid, right? I want to plot out all the days in all the months, so January and then February and March. January, I got, I went through a surgery, so during the first week or so, second week or so, I was, uh, I was in Singapore for the whole month of January, and I didn't really get to run a lot. So that actually affected my, so you, you see that it's relatively empty in there. So after my surgery in February, I started running. The doctor told me not to run for at least uh, two months, but I couldn't really care. Uh, by the start of February, I started running. So uh, you can see that there, those are, those are my runs start to ha uh, happen here. And then you see that during May or June, I start to run a lot more. Towards the end of uh, April, I started running a lot more. But you, and also you see that my speed has started to increase a lot more. To uh, the, the lower the better, right? Because it takes it takes you less time to complete uh, one kilometer. So yeah, you see that my my time has started to improve as well um, uh, over the June period. So I want to actually visualize something like that. And I also want to have an alternative visualization that, that use the size of the bubble to sort of represent. Uh, maybe I'll change this out later, but right now I just want to have this too. And I, I think it looks good. It's very it's very motivating. I think every day to just wake up, go into my Pi script because this is all deployed live anyway. I could just uh, open this up on my mobile phone. And because it's mobile responsive, it looks great on my mobile phone. And I, it's very motivating to sort of see that, okay, you know, I run pretty fast um, oh, the, the last one week, but I run faster the week before and you wanted to catch up to that speed. And you know that everything is going to appear on your dashboard. So you tend to do a little bit more work and put in a little bit more sort of motivation. All right, so how do we create the grid and how do we do the sort of the bubble at the bottom? All right, so let's create the grid first. Very similar ideas, odd chart, and then you want to put in the source of the data. Where's the data source from? It's the same thing, run 1km. And then now this, instead of a mark line or mark point, I'm going to use mark rectangular. So mark rec, okay? And then I'm going to say the same thing. I'm going to have encode and we need encode. I want to have the X, the Y, the color, same thing all the way up here. So you see the X and Y, the color. In fact, you could just copy and paste most of this stuff. But let's think about this. On the X axis, what do we have? We have the date, right? The date, which is the date, the, the number of date uh, within that month. So this is the 3rd of January. This is the 5th of February. This is the 12th of February and so on and so forth. So I want to have Alt X and this is the date. Transform that to start from start time. So take start time and then uh, use that to find out the sort of the, the uh, date, which is like 16 or 17 or 12 or 11. Uh, this is going to be ordinal. So ordinal because two is better than, two is higher than one, three is higher than two. Okay, so on and so forth. And then from there, I want to give it a title. The title is going to control what shows up on the label, on the axis here. So I want to say title equals to date. And I think that's kind of good enough. And then alt Y. Alt Y, I want this to be the month, right? So remember the thing about uh, the, the one I showed you about Altair. So Altair did transform. If you click onto that URL, you see that there is all this that you can use, right? So that's the same thing that I'm using here. Um, I'm going to have that to be man and I'm going to use the stop time as well. And again, it's going to be ordinal. All right. And title will just be man. This is basically your access label. All right. And in fact, I probably don't even want that because it's quite obvious that it's a month anyway already. So I would just hide that out actually. Um, odd axis and I will just want title to be nothing. So I don't really want title to be anything. Okay. Color as well. So color equals to odd color. And now the color should map to, let's take a look. It should map to the, let's say the average speed of that, of that, uh, you know, of that day. Okay, so if there are more than one runs, I want to take the average speed. So I'm going to say odd color. And now I'm going to map to the mean of seconds per km. 
and this will now be a quantity okay and I guess that's kind of it um, we're gonna just print our grid and now that we're gonna do all of this together we want to lay them out nicely so I'm gonna copy this and put this all the way down at the bottom and in Altera you can also just put a sort of this pipe to sort to say okay this is next to it so when I do it like this it's gonna just say okay grid goes next to these two so these two comes first on the left and then this goes on the right let's go back to our URL and there you go so you have that um, one thing I immediately realized was that this was the day of my operation I think this was like one day prior to my operation and I was running really really slow because uh, I was also fasting at the time so um, and also a couple of other factors I was also like busy and stuff so what I wanted to do is to take away this kind of like outlier so that my plot doesn't look like there is a massive outlier here that, that just sort of become an eyesore so I want to only take anything within the 99 percentile so I want to just forgive myself for that one percent of time where I wasn't really running um, you know, like like uh, seriously right so what I can do is I could go all the way up to my run 1km and I would just say something like remove the one percentile uh, as outlier just to be a bit more forgiving I don't want to hard code any value though I, I just want to say one percentile and so that kind of make it uh, possible for me to if there are in future if let's say I run halfway in there some sort of injury anything happen um, it wouldn't then make my dashboard looks bad because there's one massive outlier so i want to say run run km and i want to overwrite that by saying run run km as well and this would be run one km and take the seconds per km and if and only take values that are what only take values that are below this multiply by a uh, not multiply but applied to a quantile of 0 0.99 so only take values that are below this so anything above that don't even worry about that so I just sort of remove 1% out just be a bit more forgiving and so uh, allow for things to happen in life because things will happen right so just allow for things to happen and now it's a, a little bit better because you remove that one data point uh, I know that because I confirmed before I did this whole demo for you I confirmed that I only remove one data point which is uh, you know that 1% out all right and now that we have this um, if you want to just create the bubble at the bottom you can also do that absolutely so just you could even just roughly copy almost all of that almost all of that and now name it bubble and now you could still do the same technique you could say grid and you could say grid and bubble so grid and bubble we just put them side by side by the way all of these are just like sort of shortcuts anyway if you don't want to do that what you can do is to be more explicit and just use the odd dot um, you can do hish concat for horizontal concatenation or v for vertical concatenation and you can say grid bubble and the difference is basically one would put them um, you know next to each other side by side one would put them you know vertically up and down right um, or you could just use the shorthand which is like the plus or the n or the, the the pipe symbol right so this is the same as just saying something like this is the same as saying something like horizontal concat and taking this one first and then passing in and then take this it's the same as this it's the same as this right but um, just want to show you like different ways to achieve the same thing we don't need to use both techniques like that um, and then within the bubble we want to maybe change a couple of things here so we have the start we have the x y that's the same uh, but we want to map the size of the bubble right also we don't want this to be rectangular otherwise it's just you know redundancy just complete the same information instead what we want to have is we want to have the um, I guess we want to have the size so size should be odd size very similar to what you've seen up here because we also use odd size up there uh, in the lines we see that there is a size we map the size here so within size we also want to map uh, seconds per km uh, actually we don't even need the mean to be honest with you we don't it's not really the mean doesn't really matter anyway but I guess we could keep it there um, seconds per kilo or not no. and just remove all that um, this is the quantity and then what we need I guess that's about it I guess if we change the size now we have the odd, odd X odd Y size color we could make this to interactive so we could zoom in and if you look at the page right now and you realize that okay well there's the X and there's a uh, you know this is the grid and there's a bubble but then you realize that the bubble itself the size is not they, they don't seem to have a big difference because they're taking in the full range of value from zero to 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 you know 400 or 300 or whatever the, the speed is so you're not going to see a very big distinct 
um, distinction in terms of the, the size. So what you can do is to change the range a little bit. And so for example, you could go and tinker around with the size and you can add an extra parameter here to say something like scale and this will be all scale and give it a range. So for example, you can experiment with like something like range and you can try one to 500 um, and you can say uh, sort of see what it looks like. Okay. Now, if you look at one to 500, you see that, okay, now you see that some are maybe a bit more pronounced. You see that they're actually go, um, going up here. Uh, but what you can also do apart from range is to change the domain and domain, you could do something like, I could do something at like 100 and then 300, for example. So this is kind of the domain of my, the, the domain and the range of my parameter. You can, you have to think around with that to make it, you know, look a little bit better. Um, uh, this doesn't seem to do a lot, but we could, maybe what we could do is to maybe take this and say run uh, one kilometer and change the seconds per kilometer and we take the minimum value, right? And then that we could take the ma maximum value. So sort of like within the bounds of this, the minimum value and the maximum value, we could try and play around with that. Um, this looks much better now because now the minimum is uh, is taking into effect, but I actually want to inverse this. I actually want make want to make my runs that are fastest to be the largest circle and the runs that are the slowest to be the sl slowest circle. So I want to sort of inverse that so that this becomes the largest and the biggest point becomes the smallest. How do I do that? Now, the fastest way to do that is to change the order of this. Instead of this minimum 300, you want to put 300 comma this. So inverse them. And now you should see that uh, now it's working. All right, now let's give it the two tip. And so that would be sort of the completion of the dashboard, except for the top part that, that, we'll, that we'll do later maybe. But um, we add a two tip. We want a two tip to be very similar to what we have up there. So I'm just going to sort of cheat my cheat a little bit and copy all of that and bring the two tip down. In fact, I could maybe create that as a sort of as a constant uh, variable and then just copy that, paste it everywhere. So we don't have to keep, um, you know, don't repeat ourselves, right? And now, sure enough, we see that, we see that uh, it works now. We have the two tip. If we hover over, things are working. Everything looks great. And um, there is a legend there that we don't, I, I guess we don't need the legend, but if you want to, you can keep it. Um, but I, I just want to remove the legend for now. I just don't need it. So I'm going to say, get in here and change the legend to be none. And let's save that. I mean, it's pretty straightforward that the size will correspond to the speed that I really don't need to have an extra legend saying that. And the other one could use a legend, but I also don't want the entire thing, like the mean of seconds per, se per km. That is very obnoxious. It's very disturbing to see all the, the whole thing coming out there like that. So I want to just change that uh, odd color. That's cool. I want to add the legend and I want to change that to odd legend. And I want to give it a title. I want to overwrite that. And I want to just say this is average speed. That's good enough. You don't need the whole thing, right? So just average speed. And I think, yeah, that's, that's good enough. So all of them looks okay, except it's still not yet mobile responsive. The fact that I know it's not mobile responsive because if I drag around, you know, it still goes beyond that sort of the device width. So that's something we can do in maybe part two of this uh, of this episode, I, uh, this of this series, I guess. Uh, for now, I think the video is a little bit too long already. Um, so we, we come to this dashboard, which is actually quite, quite uh, it's quite awesome for the amount of code that we have to write, um, get to this point, and it's easy to, de to deploy because all we need to do is to deploy this as like a static site um, because all of this is gonna just be front end. So this is really cool. And I hope that we, I hope that you're pretty satisfied with what you made so far. So in the next part, what we're gonna do is to finish up the key statistics so that the whole thing will look like this and we're gonna bring in a few other things. Uh, for example, we're gonna I'm gonna show you how I generate the cards, the buttons here, and then um, I'm gonna make everything responsive, mobile responsive, so there's no scroll to the right. Everything is just gonna be, um, you know, like everything is just gonna be in here. The tables are gonna have to scroll, but that's okay. That's always gonna be easy anyway. This is mobile responsive, but the rest you see that there is no horizontal scroll. It's just gonna be uh, nice and dandy. So we're gonna maybe in part two of the series we're gonna continue on that. We're gonna add the title and stuff, um, make it look better. But so far, I think th this is this is it. We are about 70% done. So stick with me and um, I'll catch you in the next episode.